Good to go. We're ready. Okay. Well, thanks very much for your time. Um, unfortunately, we're here this morning to talk about three fatal uh, collisions that have occurred within the last, or within a 12-hour period um, overnight. So uh, the last. Well, most recent crash being six o'clock this morning. So I'll briefly go through those three and then I'll, uh, I'll be open to some questions at the end of that. So um, essentially this morning, on, on Sunday morning, we've got four families that are um, in the midst of living within their own personal crisis at the moment. Um, and that is as, as, a result of, uh, sorry, guys, as a result of three separate collisions that have occurred overnight. Um, shortly before midnight last night at Stock Road, um, just south of Bordertown, a 20-year-old man died as a result of a collision when his vehicle uh, overturned and he was uh, dead at the scene. Shortly uh, after 2.30 this morning at Railway Terrace at Osborne, a motorcycle uh, collided. Um, that was carrying a pillion passenger at the time and unfortunately the rider of that motorcycle has died and the pillion passenger is currently in hospital uh, with critical injuries. The third collision this morning occurred at uh, Yadalunga and shortly after six o'clock this morning on the Gawler One, uh, One Tree Hill Road, there was a solo occupant in a motor vehicle that collided with a tree and sadly he has also died at the scene. Um, these three deaths overnight bring our road toll to 39, which is, is the same at this time last year. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, three I mean, one, one overnight is, is a tragedy and bad enough. Um, three overnight, as I said before, is a, a significant impact. It's, it's devastating for the families involved, but uh, for the police as well, it's, it's, an, it's an incredibly difficult thing to deal with. And again, it takes us back to that challenge of imploring with people to take care on the roads. Um, it, it just goes to show that regardless of the weather or time of year, um, it, it can be dangerous to drive on the road and, and we implore people to take care and, and be mindful about how they're driving. Can you tell us anything about the condition of the fourth person who was in hospital? Um, so the most recent date, so the, the latest condition, the information I've most recently received is that uh, we've got a 16 year old boy who's in hospital, um, his family's at his bedside and again obviously they are living in a world of uncertainty at the moment as to any ongoing um, impacts that this collision may have but again the understanding, or my understanding at the moment is that the boy's in a critical condition so we have grave, grave concerns for his welfare at the moment and again it just reinforces the fact that uh, such young people on our roads are, you know, really nobody is um, insusceptible to being involved in a collision. Can you say anything about the, the, the boy's condition? Uh, so at, at the moment my most recent understanding is that he's in a life-threatening condition at the moment. What's uh, some of the details surrounding that Osborne crash? What sort of things will so as I said this morning, we've got four families that are deeply impacted, but at the same time, uh, we've got major crash investigators that are preparing three coronial files and also an investigation into how, how those injuries have occurred. So it's very early stages at the moment to, to speculate as to what's occurred. And again, we'd implore for anyone, anybody that's got any information to get in contact with police, either through Crime Stoppers or, or through a police station. Um, so as I say, it's very, very early stages at the moment. What we do understand at, at that early time of morning is that we've, we've got a motorcycle that's been travelling along the road. Um, the collisions occurred and as a result, sadly, the rider has died and, and the pillion passenger has been taken to hospital. Uh, again, it's early at the moment and I don't have that information at hand at the moment, but what, what I do understand is that the motorcycle has left the roadway or certainly ended up on the side of the roadway. So what the investigators will be looking at is anything that may have occurred that led to the, the motorcycle either leaving the road or, or colliding or becoming out of control. Do you see nights as bad as this very often? Is this a rare occurrence? Um, Certainly three, three in one night um, is, is, a, is a tragic night and it's very upsetting for the families involved. For us, um, we, you know, our sympathy goes to the families of those that are involved, but again, there is an element that we find very frustrating and, and, and again, our appeal to people is to be mindful of the way that they are driving on the road. You know, Be aware of the fatal five that we've got. Anybody that chooses to speed, not wear a seatbelt, if they're driving while they're distracted, and we're not talking about mobile phones as the pure source of distraction. People that are, are, are upset or emotional or, you know, they might be over overly excited. We're, we're talking about people making sure that when they get behind the wheel of the car, that they're confident that they're going to be able to keep themselves safe, but importantly, everybody else on the road. Do police have any indication that those factors were, were elements in any of these crashes? No, certainly not. So the appeal, the, the appeal is broad... Uh, widely targeted at all the, all the drivers in South Australia. So as I say, it's very, very early stages at the moment. The investigators are, are still piecing together exactly what's occurred overnight. But largely what that does bring us back to is that we, we know historically that large, um, large amount of fatal and serious injury collisions, there's an element of those fatal five. So we're talking about drink and drug driving. We're talking about speeding, seat belts, driving with uh, inattention, and again, dangerous road users as well. So again, what that brings us back to is, is, is drive safely. Drive safely for yourself, for your 
passengers and for the other road users. Are, are drugs and alcohol a potential factor in this? Um, again, it, it is way too early to be able to assa um, ascertain that at this point, but as, as part of the investigation for all of these collisions overnight, as, as we do for all the crashes that we investigate, that will be one, one aspect we will look at. Is it known whether the, the motorcyclists were both of them were wearing helmets? Uh, the initial information I do have is that they were wearing helmets at the time. Were they properly fastened at all? Uh, I, again, that, that's not information I've got at hand, but it, it certainly forms part of the investigation as to what's occurred to the collision and, and how our, uh, the people involved in, in each incident was uh, in the vehicle. And again, that comes back to making an assessment of were seatbelts involved, was, was there any drug or alcohol use, uh, was there anything else that contributed as well? Given all three crashes were a single vehicle, is it more likely that the fatal five were contributing factors? Um, I, again, I'd, I'd be speculating to, to sort of attribute any sort of cause at the moment. It, it, it is very early. We're certainly looking at that. But as you say, where, where we've got a single vehicle collision, we, we do need to have a good look and what our, what our crash investigators will be looking at is the conditions of the road, what, what the evidence of the scene will tell us in terms of was speed an indicator, was inattention or fatigue. Um, certainly when you look at the times that, that these crashes have occurred overnight, we are looking at, at late evening through to the very early morning, so certainly as much as drug and alcohol will form a factor, um, you know, fatigue and those sorts of elements will become part of the focus as well. Just to reiterate, in the wake of these three fatalities and obviously one being suicide at the Larson Hospital, what is the South Australian Police message to drivers on our roads? Um, as I said, this, this is the adaptive challenge that we face with, with road policing. We are, police can only put out the message for, for so long. What we need is, is buy-in from, from people that are using cars in the community. We need South Australian drivers to, to come and, and um, buy-in for their part to being safe on our roads. And again, what we implore them to do is not drink and drug drive, wear seat belts, obey the speed limits, um, you know, maintain awareness of what they're doing on the road. As, as we've seen with my, something like mobile phone use, again, exterior to the three crashes overnight, but mobile phone use straight away, we know that that increases your chances of a crash by, I think it's about four, four times. So what we implore people to do is, is to listen to the message, but again, you know, it, it needs to be personal. They need to understand that it's not just about them getting home or what they're doing, but it's about their passengers and it's about the other road users. The, um I imagine the events of the last 12 or so hours put a self-restraint on police resources. Uh, certainly. So, uh, you know, to, to have three three crashes occurring within such a short time certainly does put a strain on, on our investigators. And, and it's not just the workload and, and our response capacity. Um, we, you know, our investigators are faced you know, daily with investigating these matters. So on a day where there isn't a crash, they're still investigating what has happened for a previous crash. And then on top of that, they're, they're going out and they're seeing quite often the same factors, you know, they're investigating the same factors. So again, there is, a, there is an element from the police that, that really appeals to the public as much for their own safety, but it's as much for just get home safely, drive, drive to survive essentially. And at the end of the day, um, we can get on with doing our job. I, I personally would love to see the major crash people having no work to do and, and we can put their efforts into proactive road safety efforts. I, I, I want them to not have to investigate fatal accidents, um, but unfortunately we're with 39, 39 into the year and, and that's where we are at the moment. Thanks guys.